Hello, and welcome to another of Sethildor's World of Warcraft guides. This one is going to be on our next class, Mages. And as we usually do, we will start from left and move to the right, starting with, of course, Arcane, a lot of people's favorites. So, for picking Arcane, we get the instant cast spell, Arcane Barrage, which is a fairly cheap instant cast, 4 second cooldown, 40 yard range spell. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm getting over a cold. So, pretty short cooldown for an instant cast spell, pretty nice. Uh, also, 40 yard range is quite long, especially for an instant cast, so that's good. It does appreciable damage. Also have Arcane Specialization, which increases the damage of all Arcane spells by 25%. Can't say anything bad about that, obviously. And finally, at level 80, you gain your Mastery of the Arcane, Mana Adept, which increases all spell damage done by up to 24%, uh, depending on how much unspent mana you have. That 24% increases by 1.5% for each point of Mastery you have, so that means more Mastery means more overall damage increase from your Mastery ability, which means that... Arcane mages want to focus on intellect and mastery, and then all the other little fun stuff. So, on that note, uh, keep in mind Mana Adept will definitely be playing a role in a lot of our choices, because this is a PvE mage spec. So, damage output is going to be our first and foremost priority, as of which, by saving us mana and providing more mana, we will increase our damage output. So, it's kind of nice how that plays off. Anyway, let's grab Arcane. We have Arcane Concentration, which works as it used to. I believe it used to be called Clear Casting State, or at least that's the buff it gives you. Uh, clear Casting, if you don't know, basically makes your next spell free mana cost, which, as you recall me saying not a minute ago, the more mana we have, the more damage we do. So if I can cast a spell that won't cost me any mana, in the long run, the next spell I cast is going to be that much more powerful because I didn't have to burn mana on the spell before it. So, by getting clear casting, not only do you increase mana longevity for a long fight, but you also increase your long run DPS. Because you didn't spend mana on one spell, your next spell will get a larger mastery bonus because you still have more of your mana. Essentially, you want to be at 100% mana through the whole fight to get your, say you only have 8 mastery, your 24% increase, but as we all know, spells cost mana, therefore that would be impossible. But this will help you stay up on your mana, which will help you get the larger percentage increase from your mastery. Not only that, but who doesn't like clear casting, right? Priests are probably crazy jealous about this. Improved Counterspell does what it did before, adds a silence to the effect of your Counterspell. Not bad, uh, but I usually don't miss with Counterspell, so... Uh, debatable whether it has any good use in PvE. It is not the most useless talent, but it is not the most useful either. Uh, ergo, I'm bypassing it. Netherwind Presence, uh, when capped out, free 3% haste. Can't argue with that. Something to note, though, is all three of these first row talents, Netherwind Presence used to be next to the bottom of the tree. Clear casting used to be in either the second or third row uh, as a prereq to Presence of Mind, and Improved Counterspell was somewhere in the middle of the tree. So they did a lot of shuffling with the Arcane Tree. It can be a little disorienting for your first time through it, so uh, bear with, or don't feel bad, I should say, if you're getting a little lost. Anyway, Torment the Week, again, moved up a couple rows, but uh, does what it did before. I think the damage bonus was reduced slightly, uh, but it increases damage done by your Arcane Spells by 6% to Snared, or slowed targets. Now you're going to say, well, that's lame, because in Watluck, I didn't want to have to get an extra GCD, and now with Mana Adept, I definitely don't want to burn the mana to cast slow every time, just to increase my DPS output by 6% damage. I'll have more mana if I don't cast slow, I won't have to worry about the GCD, so the DPS will even out. Well, later on in the tree, you'll find out that, uh, Blizzard decided to come up with this really awesome talent that lets you avoid that. I'll talk more about it when we get there. Next, we have Invocation, which is another new talent they came up with, which basically gives you a 10% damage buff for a little while after successfully interrupting a spell. Now, that means you have to cast Counterspell while the sp their spell is being cast, 
and it's got to be an interruptible spell. You don't get this if you use, say, the Fire Talent Impact, which causes a stun with Fire Blast. That's not an interrupt, even if you do it while they're casting. That's classified as a stun, even though it causes an interrupt effect. Also, if you sheep them while they're casting, that's not classified as an interrupt either. That's classified as, I think, disorient or something like that. It's a crowd control. It's not an interrupt. The only way to get this is through casting counterspell while they are casting a spell. So keep that in mind. Still a really nice talent, not going to lie. The only question is, how many interrupters do you have in your raid group? Is it really worth it putting two points in there? In my opinion, yes, because it looks like you're going to be interrupting a lot in Cataclysm. Just simply looking at the heroics, such as, um, I believe it's Baron Ashbury. The first boss in Shadowfang Keep, heroic, is uh, significantly the pinnacle of requiring interrupts, at least as of now. I hear they're nerfing him in a patch, but still. Um, next we have Improved Arcane Missiles, fires two more Arcane Missiles. Uh, as of now, don't quote me on this, but I do not believe by causing your Arcane Missiles to fire two more Missiles, uh, I think the cast time stays the same, so they just insert two more ticks of damage. And in all honesty, Arcane Missiles is a damage over time effect. The only difference is it's based on you sitting still casting versus a dot ticking on the boss. But it is a damage over time effect. You do 2k damage every X interval for this long. 2k is a generic number. Uh, no, some people do less, some people do more. Um, so basically what that means is normally it casts four missiles. So let's say it takes you two seconds to shoot out the four missiles and each missile does 2k. So that's two, four, six, eight k damage from one arcade missiles. If you do this, the time shouldn't increase. Uh, they may hotfix that, I don't know. As of now, I don't believe it does. The time won't increase. The damage done in that time will. So if it still does 2k each, that's 2, 4, 6, 8 from the original 4, and then you add 2 2k ticks onto that. So 10, 12k. 12k in 2 seconds, or 8k in 2 seconds. Which sounds better? Obviously the 12k. And when you do your DPS math, or recount does it for you, or Scotter, or whatever you use, what it is, is it's basically how much damage you do, did you do in this amount of time. And then it does throws it in an equation, and that's your DPS. So obviously, if you can increase the amount of damage done in the same amount of time, you're going to have a higher DPS. So you want to take that. It's a staple skill. Also in this row, I should point out, we do have Improved Blink, which provides a speed bonus uh, for a short time after Blink, 70% when it's capped out. Now, in a PvE scenario, Blink should get you where you need to go. This speed boost is often considered overkill, which I agree with, and uh, therefore is kind of unnecessary in a PvE scenario. However, if you are bad at getting to where you need to be, if you're slow, if you have a bad computer, and sometimes things happen late... You might pick this up, but honestly, if you have a working computer, that's fine. If you know half of what you need to do, this is going to be overkill. Blink will get you where you need to go, even if you have to run a little bit afterwards. 70% speed increase is not going to be that important. Now, next we have Arcane Flows, which I'll get to in a second. Presence of Mind, which causes the next spell cast, that's under 10 seconds, to be an instant cast. Same as it always has been since the beginning of WoW. Uh, we have Missile Barrage, which causes our Arcane Missiles to fire every 0.5 seconds instead of whatever they fired before. Now, basically, the uh, explanation of the ability above it, which is Improved Arcane Missiles, that you added damage in the same amount of time. Now you're taking this increased damage that was done in 2 seconds and reducing the amount of time it's done in. So basically, if you reduce time or increase damage in any interval, you will increase your DPS. So basically, what this two-talent combination essentially is doing is it's showing and teaching all the mages that choose Arcane that there's two things you want to look for in your spec when you're looking at increasing DPS. This actually goes for everyone, but it's prominent in the Arcane tree. You want to increase damage done without extending uh, the time it's done in. 
or you want to reduce the time it takes to do that amount of damage without reducing the damage done. Or, if you can do both, increase damage and reduce the time that increased damage is done in, i.e. these two talents, you will see a massive jump in your DPS compared to doing neither of those two things. Those are the two things that will impact your DPS highest. Reducing damage, or sorry, reducing the time the damage is done in, or increasing the damage in the same amount of time. Uh, finally in this row we have Prismatic Cloak, which adds 6% DR, which again is more of a PvP thing. However, if you find yourself taking ridiculous amounts of AoE damage, which may not be surprising in Cataclysm as some of the heroics are showing, this may not be a bad thing. If you want to be friendly to healers, this may not be a bad thing. But overall, I find it's useless as I'm sitting at 92k health as a freaking mage. That's a little ridiculous compared to what I'm used to. Keep in mind, I started a little bit before BC, so I'm used to very low health pools. This jump from freaking Watluck, um, I mean, everybody's health essentially got doubled or more than doubled, so it's a little crazy. Uh, all the more reason to not worry about the DR, and then the fade time on invisibility is really unnecessary in PvE. Waiting three seconds should not kill your DPS that much, especially considering you want to drop your threat, um, so not casting for three seconds is not a bad thing if you're using invisibility. If you're using it to get past mobs, then waiting three seconds before you run through is not going to kill you either. Be patient. Uh, now, back to Arcane Flows in this row. Basically, it reduces the cooldown on, uh, some spells like POM, Arcane Power, Invisibility, and Evocation. Evocation is a flat two-minute reduction. The others are 25% reduction of their duration, which is quite nice. That'll drop Presence of Mind down to about one and a half minutes. Pardon. Uh, I believe Arcane Power is the same. So the more often you have your cooldowns up, the more often you'll be able to uh, I'll say this, but it's not true, artificially increase your DPS. So the more often they're up, the better. Also, the reduced cooldown on evocation. If you pop evocation, you get mana back. Guess what that means? Your mana adept is now giving you an increased damage bonus. That mastery from earlier in the video, remember? If you give yourself basically a freaking IV of mana, which is what evocation is, if you're at 25% mana, you evocate to 75% mana, guess what? You were getting 25% of your damage bonus from your mastery, you evocate, now you're getting 75% from your damage bonus from mastery. That's awesome. The more often you can evocate, that means the more often you can shoot up on mana, and if you shoot up on mana, you'll increase your DPS, which is the whole point of a PvE spec. So, keep that in mind. Next row, we have a cool new talent called Improved Polymorph. What this does is it gives a 3 second stun time after the polymorph is broken due to damage, and it has a 10 second internal cooldown. Now, this is definitely very appealing to PvP. Uh, no question at that, but this is a PvE spec. So you're saying, what benefits does this have in PvE? Well, say you have an annoying little arms warrior who decides to blade storm too close to your damn polymorph because he didn't listen. Well, you now have three seconds to react when he pops your polymorph. Three seconds you didn't have before. Let's say, uh, that stupid freaking blizzard... Um, decides to say CC can get hit by a Paladin's Avenger shield now. So, shield goes out after you, sheep. Oh my god, why did it hit the frickin' sheep? What's your problem, Blizzard? That's dumb. No offense to Blizzard, you're fantastic. But, it gives you three seconds of response time you didn't have before. Three seconds of time that you can start sheeping, and they can't do anything. Like, uh, some healers in Vortex Pinnacle have super fast cast times for their heals. Well, if you're sheeping that one and it breaks and you don't see it in time, it could get some heals off and just cause problems for the group. But if it pops, you have three seconds to recognize that it's broken and start sheeping again to stop his heals. So it gives you some extra playroom that you didn't have before for dumb group mates or just bad situations. So overall, not bad. Uh, not a priority, though. Uh, but not bad. Uh, this is probably the best one-point talent in the game. I would uh, not hesitate to say that. It is definitely in competition with abilities like Rampage if you're a warrior. But um, 
Basically, it's a 3% damage increase for everybody in your party or raid. Period. Flat out. No question about it. Uh, 3% increased damage for everyone for spending one point. I, I'm pretty sure that's unquestionably a good thing. If you're saying you don't want that, then don't raid. <laughs> um, next one we have is Encanter's Absorption, which this talent is very interesting. It has a ridiculously nice um, bonus that it can give you, but it could have a potentially raid-wiping effect as well. Um, Mage Ward, first of all, is Frost Ward and Fire Ward, and I believe Arcane Ward, thrown together in one. You didn't have Arcane Ward before, and now it's just all in one little ward that will absorb damage. Which is nice. And that part of this talent is good. It says when your Mana Shield or Mage Ward absorbs damage, your spell damage is increased by 20% of the amount absorbed for 10 seconds. That sounds fantastic! With all the AoEs out there and Cataclysm that the bosses are throwing at you, freaking Lady Vaj clone in Throne of Tides with her damn water spouts. Oh, I missed it. Slow fall so I don't die from the damage of falling. But hey, that gave me 20% uh, increased spell damage. Whatever. Shadow Bolt Volley. Hey, you popped my freaking mana shield, but you gave me 20% increased spell damage. So whatever. Don't stand in the fire. Damn it, I'll absorb that damage. I'm going to stand in the fire for an increased spell damage bonus. Don't actually do that. I will slap you if you do. But that was just an example. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. That's the case as far as that goes. It's like, well, I'm going to have my mana shield up anyway. And it's just going to give me more spell damage bonus. Why wouldn't I do that? Because the second half of this talent can potentially kill everybody. In addition, when your mana shield is destroyed, all enemies within 6 yards are knocked sorry, back 12 yards. So, I'm going to stand in the fire to absorb it and get 20% damage increase from all the damage coming in. Um, keep in mind, I know this is a Watluck fight, but as an example, Sartharian. Okay. I'm going to talk about it on 10-man mode. If we had this talent during Sartharian, let's see, what kind of ads did we have? We had lava ads all over the place, and if you chose to do Drake's Up, you had Whelpling ads all over the place, too. And what were you supposed to do? You were supposed to have a tank pick those up. I'm going to pop this to get increased spell damage and kill Sartharian fast. Mana shield. Two seconds later, mana shield pops. What does that do to all the ads around you? Boom! Launches them in every direction, 12 yards away from you. Potentially a full distance of 18 yards away from you. What happens when there's three fire elementals that happen to be 6 yards behind you? Mana shield pops 12 yards behind you, and the tank's standing in Sartharian. That is now 18 yards from you to the mobs. How many would it be from you to the tank that's supposed to pick it up? Let's say 20, 25. Let's do quick math here. Say it's 20. 20 plus the 8, 20 to you, plus the 18 to the mob. That's 38. I know some taunts are 40 yards, but some aren't. That's 38 yards that the tank needs to haul ass across, pick up the mobs, get his ass back to where he needs to be, and pick up more mobs. Not only that, oh, I'm going to knock back this mob. I'll save myself from damage. No, you knocked it back onto the frickin' healer, and it starts doing an AoE inferno that's burning the crap out of the healer, slowing down his casts. This could destroy a raid group. So if you choose to pick this up, if you really choose to pick this up, which I am saying don't do, then never use Mana Shield. Only use Mage Ward. Unless it's a fight where it's just a boss, there's no trash, fine, use Mana Shield. But if you choose to pick this up, please don't use Mana Shield. Use Mage Ward if you're going to pick this talent up. I'm saying don't pick it up. Anyway, that's my take on this talent. <sighs> now, let's move to the next one. Improved Arcane Explosion. This makes Arcane Explosion potentially a viable AoE spell, which is nice because I kind of like that spell. It reduces the GCD generated by Arcane Explosion by 0.5 seconds, which is awesome. 
because that means you can spam, spam, spam away. And uh, also, at two points, it reduces the threat generated by 80%. What does that mean? Well, the only time you're going to be using Arcane Explosion, unless you're a perky little mage like me who likes to run into melee range, is um, when everything is around you anyway. Otherwise, you're going to be using Blizzard or Flame Strike, which are, of course, increased damage output and blah, 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 all good. Keep in mind, also, Mana Depth will increase AoE damage, just pointing that out. Anyway, what this does for you is, let's say there's so many AoE mobs. Oh, here we go. Good example. Corobris, Heroic Mode, or Reg Mode, even. Um... The crystal, red crystal shards he shoots out on Heroic spawn into little adds. And also on Reg and Heroic, when he is burrowing, he pops up shale spiders that you have to kill. Well, those shale spiders like to jump on everybody. They don't really have an initial aggro. They go after who's closest. And if you don't have a tank picking every single one of them up, and I'm not blaming the tank because there's a lot of adds, then it can get a little hairy. And you'll lose channeling or flame strike will be slower because you're getting hit. So, you use your instant cast AoE, Arcane Explosion. Well, this is going to let you Arcane Explosion more often to kill it faster, and in the event that you happen to be standing next to, oh, let's say that silly arms warrior I mentioned that popped sheep earlier. He happens to be standing next to you, blade storming away, having the time of his life. Well, guess what? Normally, you just sit back and not DPS so he could get aggro off of you. Because plate wearers are going to be easy, uh, easier to keep up than, say, a little mage like me. Now, you can go ahead and help him out. You could freaking hop on his shoulders and spam Arcane Explosion around him. That would be awesome. A gnome riding a human warrior spamming Arcane Explosion while he blade storms. Anyway, sorry. You could go, go to town with your Arcane Explosion and not worry about getting threat. Because he's making 100% threat... And he's probably critting a lot, so 150% threat. What are you doing? You're making 20% threat with your Arcane Explosion. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about pulling AoE aggro either if you bust this out. Keep in mind, it's easier to pull aggro when you're in melee range, which you will be if you're using Arcane Explosion. So making 20% threat is fantastic. It'll save you a lot of hassle from managing threat on AoE pulls, because I know I pull when I AoE with Blizzard as I'm a Frost Mage. <coughs> Or spam flame strike, which is kind of fun to do, but seriously man intensive. But that's beside the point. So this helps you survive AoE pulls without having to watch your threat, and it allows you to do a lot more DPS with Arcane Explosion than you did before because of the reduced GCD. It's a nice talent overall. I personally enjoy using Arcane Explosion, especially now that it's viable, so I'm going to take it. Uh, feel free to disagree with me there, but as you're about to see, there's not really anywhere else that's good to throw these points. Keep in mind we do always backfill. So... We need two points to get to the next row. I'm going to grab Invocation, which is the one that increases dam uh, gives you sorry, a damage bonus of 10% when you successfully interrupt a spell, which is nice. Uh, next row, we have Arcane Potency. Okay, uh, either at the end of this video or a separate small video, I talk about uh, a trick with Presence of Mind and Arcane Potency that I think all you guys should really watch, because not a lot of people actually know about this trick, and... However small you may think it is, it can make a difference. So grab Arcane Potency, which provides you with a buff when you gain clear casting or presence of mind. That causes your next two spells to have a 15% increased crit chance. Don't need to explain why that's good. Uh, pick up slow, simply because you have to get it for uh, Arcane Power. And this is the talent that I was talking about plays well with uh, Torment the Weak. Blizzard did a fantastic job with the talents in cat Cataclysm, pardon, in how they interact and play with each other and interlock. There's a lot of this in the Paladin specking, in some of the other trees for mages as well. Uh, not as much as I was hoping to see in uh, Druids, but in Pharaoh there was some. But a lot of these talents like to interlock and play on each other. This one, this one proc causes you to benefit from this damage increase, and by getting this damage increase, it stacks with this buff. So, something like that. Um... But what this ability does is when you cast Arcane Blast, it automatically applies slow, free of mana charge, free of GCD. So everyone complaining, oh, I hate having the app slow, it's a waste of my time, it gives me a GCD, and it gives me freaking mana issues because it costs a measly 2k mana. Well, now you don't have to worry about it. Basically, think of Frostbolt, only Arcane and more powerful. 
What Frostbolt does is it does damage and provides a 40% slow. When you pick this up, Arcane Blast is going to do damage and provide a 60% slow as the slow spell. Not only that, but it'll provide a 30% attack speed reduction too. But um, that's basically what it's going to do. It's going to double cast for you. Um, which is awesome, because manually double casting is a pain in the ass. Um, yeah. So, that's that. Let's go to the next row, shall we? Uh, focus Magic. Old favorite buff that came in in Watluck. 3% free crit for someone you choose to buff, and when they crit, you get a present of 3% increased crit chance. Tasty, who doesn't like giving presents away? Um, Warlocks have a cool copy of this spell, but um, that's beside the point. Focus magic, good buff. Don't really need to explain it. When they crit, you get increased crit. That's about it. This one, this is an interesting talent because it used to actually be an old tier set bonus. And now it's in the spec. When you use your mana gem, you increase your spell power by 2% of your maximum mana for 10 seconds. I have about 70,000 mana right now. So 10 per... Er, sorry. 50% of 70,000 is going to be 35,000 uh, 10% is going to be 7,000, so 5% is going to be 3,500, so 2% is going to be around 1,250, we're going to say 1,000 just for the sake of this. So 1,000 bonus spell power is nothing to laugh at. Frankly, that is a ridiculously large amount of spell power to get from a proc. Not only that, but because you get it from using your mana gem, you're increasing your mana supply, which gives you more mana adept bonus from your mastery, on top of increasing your spell power by 2% of your max mana. So it increases damage output and increases spell power to increase damage output more. It's just more of that stacking talent thing that I was talking about. Um, at this point, I kind of want to lean into another rant, which is going to be a separate video. Please check that out on my channel. There should be an annotation beginning, middle, end, somewhere in this video. Uh, it's going to be like Seth Rants, uh, colon, some title for the name. But um, that is going to be very important for all of you planning to raid. Those of you who just want to better yourself as a player, you probably want to check it out too. But um, I kind of want to lead into that here. I probably will for the rant video. I'll start here on my mage and show you that. But um, that's beside the point. Improved Man Gem, great spell or Great Talent, I should say, works really well because you're going to be mana gemming anyways to get your mastery up. To get this extra bonus is just gravy on the side. Plus, it plays in with all your other talents really well. Check out my rant video for that. Two more points to get to the last uh, talent. Arcane Power, awesome spell. So, where do we want to put these two points? I'd say let's fill out another one presence. One more percent of haste, that can't hurt. And we have another point. Uh... Really, you can choose where to put this. I still say never take in Canner's Absorption, Improve Blink, Wasted, Prismatic Cloak, Wasted. Maybe Improve Counter Spell if you're feeling frisky. Uh, I'm actually going to take Improved Polymorph simply because I like the extra insurance plan. And finally, grab Arcane Power, which is a 2-minute cooldown. Cannot be used while you have Presence of Mind activated. Cannot use Presence of Mind while Arcane Power is activated. What this does is it increases your spell damage output by 20%, but mana is mana cost is increased by 10%. So you need to keep in mind when you pop this, your mana adept bonus is going to start shrinking faster than you expected because everything's costing 10% more. However, you'll be doing 20% more damage. So you want to use this, uh, say, right after an evocation. That way you're getting the most out of your mana adept at the same time as your 20% increase. Also, check out my rant. It has to do with um, this cooldown as well. You're going to want to do this coupled with all these other things in the right order to get the maximum bonus, etc, etc, etc. It's a really good talent, it's a great cooldown, it's a very short cooldown. Um, mages, arcane mages in particular, have a lot of short cooldowns, uh, which is a nice leg up over some of the other casters, uh, such as moonkins and things like that. But anyway, um, pardon me, now we have 10 points left. Go into the Frost Fire Trees or max out Arcane. Uh, again, what's left in Arcane isn't really that appealing. So what we're going to do is go to Fire, Master of Elements. When you crit, you'll get 30% of the base mana cost of the spell back, which is awesome because it helps with mana longevity, similar to clear casting. 
And if you get 30% of the base spell's mana back, that will increase your mana pool more than it, d than it would not getting that 30% back. So that will make your mana adept mastery last longer at higher percentages as well. It just all goes back to that mastery as an arcane mage. All these talents are really helping with your mastery or flat damage output, which is what you want to look for as a DPS. Uh, by far, I think Arcane has the best mastery, uh, at least with the classes that I've looked at so far. Um, and then we're going to jump over to Frost really quick, because with that bonus of getting 30% um, of the base mana of the spell back when you crit, Piercing Eyes provides a free 3% crit chance, similar to Netherwind Presence's 3% haste bonus. So 3% more often you're going to be critting. That means 3% more often, you're going to be getting 30% of the base mana of the spell back. If you time it right with your focus magic in a raid group, you're going to get 3% more from that. On top of the piercing eyes um, inactive buff of 3%, so you're going to be critting 6% more often if you have that buff on, which means you'll be getting 6% more chance to get 30% of the base mana cost of the spell back, and if you get 30% base mana cost, you're going to be increasing your mana longevity at higher ends, which is going to provide you a better percentage damage bonus from your mastery. So it all links back to that mastery again. Um, Shatter useless. It's Frostbolt damage increase and helps against frozen targets. Bosses can't be frozen. Uh, early Frost is a Frostbolt buff. Not going to be casting Frostbolt. Not going to be casting Fire Blast. Uh, the only time you can cast Fire Blast is if you're moving for a really long time. If you're moving for a short period of time, you just want Arcane Barrage, uh, and you shouldn't be moving for too ridiculously long, because you have Blink. Um, Burning Soul is a pretty good one. It helps reduce knockback when you're getting hit while casting, which is nice simply because uh, there's a lot of AoEs which can slow down your casts. If you don't have slowed down casts, then, hey, what do you know, your DPS increases because you're not taking longer to cast the spell. Um, second row in Frost and Fire is strictly Frost and Fire bonuses. I would not say there's anything good in there for Arcane Mages at all whatsoever, unless you desperately need a stun for some reason, then you could debate Impact. Other than that, no. Stay away from second row Frost and Fire. Stay, stay, stay away. This is pretty much all you want in Frost and Fire is 5 and 3. 5 and 3 if you're an Arcane Mage. Which means you have two unspent talent points. And you know me with my OCD, I don't like half-filled talents. So I'm going to fill out Improved Polymorph. But wait a minute, I just complained about my OCD. And I still have a point left, and no one-point talents. Ah, oh, Blizzard, what are you doing? What are you doing, Blizzard? Oh, this makes me want to die inside. So we'll just pick somewhere to throw this point. I'm probably going to grab Improved Counter Spell simply because it makes my life easier. I don't look as bad if I mess up on an Interrupt. I still get him if I cast early. Um, so yeah, this has been Seth Lador on the Server Blade's Edge, in the Guild Sacrilege, on the character Arctic Shatter, on PvE Arcane Mage Specking. Please check out my Presence of Mind trick video. It will help you get the leg up on the other mages standing around you who don't do it. Um, please, 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 please check out my rant. It is so important that you check that out because it does not just apply to mages. It applies to every class ever made, ever who decides to step foot in a raid instance. It's to make you a better player. It's to recognize some things that people just ignore. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please favorite this. Please thumb up. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends about me. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy making these videos. I say it every time, but I mean it every time. Uh, again, thank you for watching, and I can't wait to put another one out for you. See you next time, and again, this has been Seth Lador. See ya.